In this episode, we'll be bringing you all the highlights from the 2014 RSX European and Youth European Windsurfing Championships. The event was held in Chesme, Turkey and ran from the 28th of June to the 5th of July. The week saw many titles and trophies up for grabs and old scores to be settled anew. There was a lot on the line as participants flocked to Chesme to decide who would take home the accolades for 2014. The contenders were fighting for the Men's Open Trophy, Women's Open Trophy, the Men's Europeans, Women Europeans, Men's Under-21 Europeans, Women's Under-21 Europeans, Youth Men's Open Trophy, Youth Women's Open Trophy, Youth Men's Europeans, Youth Women's Europeans, Youth Men's Under-17 Europeans and Youth Women's Under-17 Europeans. Quite a list and a packed week of windsurfing to watch. The championships is a combined event, which means that both seniors and youths compete in this, the second most important event of the year, after the world in Santander. The RSX European and Youth European Windsurfing Championships could not have been held in a better spot than Chesme in Turkey's far western region. The area boasts beautiful champagne conditions along its coastline and welcomes frequent heavy winds that make for some exhilarating rides out on the water, perhaps explaining why the town itself is a popular holiday resort. Sports activities aside, Chesme also has plenty to offer any history buffs out there. With a past steeped in tales of battles and conquering, there is plenty to learn and many windows to the past dotted about the city. To accompany a city whose history is full of battles and rivalries, it seems only fitting that the modern-day Chesmer plays host to some watery battles of a different kind. Cue the RSX European and Youth European Windsurfing Championships. The Turkish Sailing Federation offers its support and gravitas to all the events it's involved with, and the RSX is no exception. So, what is the RSX? It's known as one of the most dynamic and versatile classes to watch, thanks to RSX's special design features. A high-technology rig with a carbon mast and boom, and a wide-style board. This board is really strong, I mean, it, it, it does the job and, and only with one sail, one board, one fin, all the same, one design, no uh, weapon race. The secret of the RS6 when, when you will never have this with, with kite surfing, with the box rule, or we, we, you will never have this with, with Formula One surfing, because it's just money, uh, we make the difference. Here is like equal chance for everybody and just the best will win at the end. So, let's get back to Chesme and the 2014 RSX European and Youth European Windsurfing Championships. The European Championships is an event that's gaining momentum each year, with more and more participants battling for a good finish. The event also sees many returning athletes looking to better their form or defend their titles. The successful campaigners of the championships were Byron Kokolanis from Greece and Charlene Picon of France, both topping their class and they'll be looking to take the win for another year running. After a hard week of racing at last year's event, Kokolanis was crowned champion of the RSX European men's class. His previous most impressive achievements were sixth in the London 2012 Olympics and third in the RSX World Championships. 
the goal is of course to maintain the second place and try my best to go if possible at first. It's going to be really hard. Uh, the Polish guys and uh, the French Julian is really they're really fast as well. So it's up to the details who is going to be on the top. And I hope in the end it works for me. France's Charlene Picon was also one to keep an eye on. A steady climber, she has worked her way to the top position she found herself at ahead of this year's event. She had obtained two bronze medals in the Windsurfing World Championships in 2009 and 2010 and a top 10 finish at the 2012 Olympics. The European this year is very strong because it just means China, so it's like a world and the world in a strong win. It's the 2014 RSX European and Youth European Windsurfing Championships saw 227 competitors, 81 men and 52 women in the senior division and 67 boys and 27 girls in the youth division, all from 39 nations from six continents. As expected, the competition was high and everyone wanted to show their country proud. The event is open to international competitors, and as such there were entrants from countries developing the sport, as well as those who already have top performers. For European, there's so many people from all the way around the world, it sounded quite high. The level of the fleet is getting every time uh, higher and higher, and uh, it's always harder to get uh, in the finals, so every time you try harder and let's see if this time is going to be better. All these guys who compete here, it's not, the, it's not easy to win with them. And... The popularity and success of the championships is evident from the number and calibre of the athletes competing. So the bar was set high this year for those athletes with an ambition to get their hands on the medals. So let's get stuck into the action and see how the racing took shape over the first two days. The first day treated competitors to ideal weather conditions, perfect for the opening day of racing. The wind reached speeds of 16 knots and the boards planed over the choppy waves of the Aegean Sea. The course area for the senior fleet was located further out in the Gulf, with youths racing closer to the yacht club for enhanced safety. The fleet had been split into groups for the qualification sessions that took place over the first two days. In the men's fleet, it was a Polish domination, with former world and European champion Mitzka claiming a hat-trick, the perfect score of three bullets in the green group, while his teammates world champion Mierzynski and youth world champion Tarnowski shared bullets in the purple group. Reigning European champion Kokolanis of Greece was the only one who managed to break their domination and snatch a bullet in the opening race of the Purple Group. A long second day awaited the 228 windsurfers competing in the 2014 RSX Windsurfing European Championships. As can be typical of the area, the wind was quite light during the morning, so both the sailors and the race committee waited patiently for the wind to fill in before racing could get underway along Chesme Bay. Finally, the thermal sea breeze kicked in and the women were first out onto the water. Reigning European champion Frances Charlene Picon had her back against the wall following yesterday's black flag and pushed hard to show her skill and ability on the second day. She won her first race and finished fourth in the second, helping her to climb to the top of the leaderboard. But it was London Olympic bronze medalist Polish Sofia Klepaczka who put in the best performance of the day, finishing with a bullet and a second place, easily securing herself a second place on the overall leaderboard. By the time the men went into the water, the wind had increased yet again and champagne conditions reigned much the delight of the competitors in the two men's groups. The Polish continued to dominate with Piotr Mitzka securing his spot at the top of the leaderboard and teammates Mierzynski and Tarnowski following, but the defending European champion, Greece's Byron Kokolanis, was breathing down their necks and applying the pressure as only a defending champion can. 
So the Polish teams had managed to obtain top spots on the leaderboard across all the categories as they dominated the second day of racing in Turkey. All in all, a very positive day for the athletes representing Poland, but the hard work wasn't over yet. Skill, ability and psychology play a key role in this competitive sport, however there is another element that pays its dividend – teamwork. For countries such as Poland, who have many competitors across all classes, teaming up and working together with fellow Polish participants is a successful and tactical game plan, but for countries such as Canada or the Czech Republic, who have single or few entrants, this sort of teamwork isn't really an option. The Polish team is obviously uh, in really good shape at the moment. They have a strong team, a strong training team. They are always training together, pushing the limit. Yeah, we are trying to, to make the same job and I think we are not so far away. Everything's really close together. Now it's time to see what happened in the final days of the event. On the third day of racing, the men's gold fleet was the first out racing. Greece's Byron Kokolanis was determined to defend his title and he put in a remarkable performance. Despite Kokolanis' initial success, Poland's Piotr Mitzka had the last word and put in a perfectly executed comeback to win the next two races and secured a safe lead at the top of the leaderboard to end the third day. In the women's fleet, it was the day for London 2012 Olympic gold medalist Marina Alabao from Spain to strike back. Despite not starting the day well, she followed up with a second place and a race win to take control of the class and end at the top of the leaderboard. Reigning European champion from France, Charlene Picon was in second place overall, but very close on points, so this battle had a long way to go yet. As the senior fleet raced on one course, the youth were on a separate racetrack and engaged in an equally intense battle in tough conditions. In the youth women's fleet, Israel Sahar Tibi held on to a series lead, while in the youth men's fleet, Polish windsurfer Radoslaw Fomanski successfully extended his points difference from the rest of the fleet. The fourth day was a day of mixed emotions, with conditions making racing unadvisable. As the wind steadily picked up throughout the day, the race committee postponed racing until 5 in the afternoon, in the hope of a decrease in strength. Some athletes stayed ashore, keeping themselves rested, energised and ready to race. For others, the breeze gave the perfect opportunity for a spot of high-speed shortboard windsurfing, much to the enjoyment of those watching from ashore. The wind might not have been suitable for longboard racing, but it was just perfect for buzzing around at speed. Ultimately, the breeze gave no let up and kept on blowing hard all day long. So it was disappointment for many as the race committee ultimately gave the call to abandon racing for the day. It was the end of the championship journey for most, but for the top 10, it was all still to play for. The youth's class was for entrance up to 18 years. As with the men's and women's RSX class, the youths had defending champions competing to retain their European titles. In the youth women's class, defending champion Hadar Heller from Israel was back in attendance, but she'd remembered how close her win had come last year with just one point separating her from second-placed Noella Finch from Britain. However, it was a different Israeli taking the championship title, Sahati B took gold for 2014 and France's Maela Gibor took the silver home. 
Last year for the youth men's, it was Argentinian Bauista Sabiter Brickner who'd won five races out of 14 over the week that was crowned the 2013 Youth European Windsurfing Champion. However, he was not in attendance this year. Taking silver last year was Poland's Radosław Fomanski, and he was back to aim for gold this time. He may have had a better shot at the title with the Argentinian champion absent, but whether that was the reason or not, Radoslaus showed that what he'd missed out on the last time, he was ready for this time around as he scooped the European Championship title for 2014, followed by Artyom Javadav from Belarus in second. It's so important for the future superstars of the sport to have the right support and a clear pathway to make a name for themselves. Part of that support comes from the older athletes in the sport, people for the young guns to look up to and feel inspired by. When I was youth, I was always watching the men's like, uh, like they were the best and I was trying to, to see how they're sailing and try to copy them. So I believe also the new generation that comes out is always uh, has the same, same thinking. They're trying to copy the, the, the men, try to, be, to train with them if it's possible and try to improve their skills. It's not uh, easy, it needs a, it's a lot of effort, but uh, in the end it pays off with a good training. I think all of the youth kids will have a good result in the men's fleet. And it's nice to see always uh, guys coming from, uh, always coming from other countries, more and more people coming to the RS6 racing. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's my second year in senior. I'm really happy to be on the top in, in, in senior fleet too. Uh, just as I, as I was, two years ago in youth. I see my guys uh, catching up now. Uh, there are some poles in the, in the top fleet in youth. From the water to the shore now, and there was some exciting news afoot as the 2013 ISAF annual conference concluded. The RSX has been confirmed for the 2020 Olympic Games, which is great news for the sport and its fans. The RSX deserves to, to be in the Olympics. I think it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, sport. For me, I don't know <laughs> still, but uh, if I can go there, but uh, yeah, I think for the, the youth and uh, all, the, all the people are selling, it's fantastic for them. Windsurfing has so much to offer, not just the windsurfers themselves, but the spectators too. The racing is always fast-paced and thrilling, the sport is accessible to a good number of people, and the competitors are amongst the most disciplined when it comes to physical training and athletic ability good to be back on 2016 and 2020 and now for sure now we have to to look forward beyond 2020 like 2024 2028 because we know that the RS6 with windsurfing is probably one of the biggest windsurfing I mean uh, Olympic growing class and we see the numbers are, are bigger and bigger in the in the World Cup and these championships and more and more nations are coming in the main main goal now is to try to have more countries from Asia Africa and the only way to, uh, to, to achieve that is to uh, make sure that we have the right stability with the equipment, not being crazy by changing. Now it's time to go back to the race course. For the last day of the 2014 RSX European and Youth European Windsurfing Championships in Chesme, Turkey. The top 10 men's and women's teams were based on the leaderboard from the previous eight races held and it was time for the final push for the competitors to make it to the podium. In the RSX men, despite winning six of the eight races, series leader Piotr Mitzka also had nothing guaranteed. So close that in theory, five riders had a shot at the gold medal. The men's medal race got underway in a breeze of 20 to 25 knots. Polish Mitzka had to finish somewhere in the middle of the 10 board to secure gold. A crash with teammate Tarnowski threw both of them into the water in spectacular fashion. After that, Mitzka had to come back strong. With Francis Bonton now leading the race, the gold medal was at stake. With unbelievable strength and bold moves, Mitzka pushed hard and soon caught the fleet up and managed to finish in sixth place, enough to secure him the gold medal by two points. 
Bon Tom kept ahead to win the medal race and claim the silver medal, with the bronze going to another Polish athlete, Mirozinski. I'm really happy, uh, and that's it. This is this is normal. This is uh, this is the rules of the medal race. Uh, everything has happened, but fortunately, uh, everything uh, stay like uh, on the, at the morning. Immediately after the men, the ten women took their places on the starting line. Frances Picon was assured of a medal, and as defending champion was determined to make it gold again. Only two athletes had the chance to seize her gold medal dream from her. Not a good start for Picon, but she found her rhythm and sailed through the fleet to decisively win the medal race and defend her European Championship title. No changes in the leaderboard behind her, with Alabao going home with silver and Klepaczka the bronze. I'm so happy today. Uh, this morning I said uh, I can't uh, go out, out of the podium, so one, two or third. And, but uh, last year I won, so I said I want to win. The RSX European and Youth European Champions were officially crowned at the medal ceremony later in the afternoon. The racing series saw a whole range of weather conditions that challenged each athlete and determined some very deserving champions, some defending and some new. The next stop now is the RSX World Championships in September, where not only the world titles are up for grabs, but Olympic qualification too. The 2015 RSX European and Youth European Windsurfing Championships are planned to take place next May in the beautiful Mondello in Sicily, Italy. Well, it's pretty nice for me. My venue, like where I grew up, and I uh, hope it's going to be a good championship. And uh, the place is nice, everyone likes it, and the logistics is very good uh, for all the people. It's a nice place, warm, sunny, and uh, most of the time windy. So let's hope for the best. Next year, Europeans 2015, Mondello, Sicily. Best place.